What's up guys, welcome to The Chess Giant. This is Solomon Rodell, and in today's video, we're gonna be covering a hyperdynamic, imbalanced, and dangerous response against the move d4. Many chess players with the black pieces complain that d4 leads to very drosh, boring, and positional games, and this is true. But how is black can we spice this game up starting at move one? I think that the Dutch defense is a great option for black. By playing f5, we're advancing this pawn and creating an imbalance at the first move in the game and as well attacking and really trying to control this very important e4 square, usually against the Dutch defense. White will fee and shadow this f1 bishop by playing g3, in which case we're now going to play knight f6, and following bishop g2, black now has a big decision to make. Do we want to go with the main line with g6, fee and shadowing our bishop and castling kingside, or do we instead want to play e6 followed by bishop e7? We're going to go over both in this video so that you can decide which one you prefer to use in your own games, but let's first go over the main line with g6. Usually, here white will just play a move like knight f3, in which case we're going to play bishop g7 followed by castling kingside. And it's honestly pretty hard for white to stop this setup after playing the move d4. I mean, g6, f5, we have two minor pieces, castling kingside. I mean, I guess white could play a move like bishop g5 looking to trade off, but honestly, we're okay if white wants to give up the bishop this early in the game. Usually, white will just play a move like c4, in which case we're now going to play d6 followed by c6. And by playing these two pawn moves, we're really trying to form a wall really protecting this fifth rank. And the most popular option is d5, advancing right in the center of the board. But let's first take a look at what we should do if white plays a more quiet move like b3. Well, one of the main ideas in the Dutch defense is to prepare an e5 push. So here I like the move queen a5, activating the queen and also supporting this e5 push. And that's what we're gonna do the very next move. Let's say white plays a move like bishop b2. We're now gonna play e5, advancing right in the center of the board and following. D takes E5, we're now going to take back. And this may seem pretty risky to have a queen on A5 defending the E5 center pawn, but similar to the Scandinavian defense, it's very hard for white to really attack this queen. In fact, I think that here there's only one move that gives white a fighting chance, and that's the move E4. If white doesn't play E4, we're going to play E4 and have a beautifully active bishop on G7 cutting down on this long diagonal. And on top of that, we're going to enjoy a huge space advantage. And if we do play E4, the bishop on G2 will lose a ton of activity. So here white has to play the move E4. Now don't fall into the trap of taking this pawn. If we take the pawn, white will play knight G5 and have three pieces all attacking that pawn and we're going to lose that pawn right away and have a very weak isolated pawn on e5 so here i think the best move is f4 the most popular option at the grandmaster level looking to create space and eventually maybe even attack the king on g1 here white will usually play a move like queen d6 trying to activate this queen in fact attacking the pawn on e5 but we're now going to play the move knight e8 what on earth are we doing doesn't this look super passive well actually in the dutch defense knight e8 is a pretty common idea and by doing this we're attacking the queen on d6 and really the only way that this queen can stay on this side of the board is with the move queen e7 but if white plays queen e7 we're simply going to play bishop f6 kick the queen back to a3, play queen c7, and we have ourselves a nice game. So with queen e7 being the only attacking move for white, usually white will instead just play queen d2, in which case we're now going to play knight a6, followed by bishop g4, activating the bishop, pinning the knight on f3. We have ourselves a very interesting, hyperdynamic, but flexible game here. I mean, the queen on a5 is active, the knight on a6 may look passive, but we have knight c5 and knight b4 ideas. This f4 pawn is very advanced, and we can take this g3 pawn at a moment's notice, activating the rook. And this knight on e8 may seem passive, but I think that its future is bright with moves like knight f6, attacking e4, or maybe even knight c7, knight e6, and knight d4. I mean, just centralizing the knight right in the board. I like black's game here. So that covers the move b3, or really any kind of quiet move that white's going to play. There's a ton of different options that we can go into, whether that's queen e8, queen a5, rook e8. We're basically trying to prepare an e5 push. Now, I prefer queen a5, but there's a ton of different options there. But what if white plays the move d5 with the main line? Does this discourage us? from playing e5? Well, the answer is no. In fact, we have to play it right away. If we don't, 
White's going to continue with moves like knight d4, have an eye on e6. This is just not good for black. So I think that e5 is by far black's best option. And now we have a beautiful pawn chain, especially these pawns on f5 and e5 supported by d6 and g6 are creating a ton of space. So I think that it's in white's best interest to use the rule of Empassant and get rid of this very strong centralized pawn by d takes e6, in which case we're now going to take back attacking this pawn on c4 now here if white plays a move like queen d3 we're going to play knight bd7 and if white takes the pawn on d6 we're actually completely okay with this we're going to take the pawn on c4 continue with knight b6 and black has the better game with a very active bishop on c4 and here if a move like bishop f4 we're simply going to play knight b6 again we're totally okay if we lose this pawn because in return we're going to get the pawn on c4 so white will usually play a move like b3 in which case we have a couple of different options one of them is knight e4 and i actually really like this idea for black really activating the knight and the bishop attacking the knight on c3 another good option for black that has been played three times at the master and grandmaster level is d5 advancing right in the center of the board looking to play knight e4 with even more force and much of the time white will play a move like knight g5 attacking our bishop on e6 and this is honestly a very logical move our bishop on e6 is really holding holding this d5 pawn in place so now we're going to play queen e7 and after losing the bishop take that knight but we still have four defenders two knights a queen and a pawn all defending that d5 pawn so we're completely okay here in fact if c takes d5 we can take back with knight f takes d5 and our bishop on g7 again comes alive and on top of that we're actually threatening to take the pawn on c4 and if here white plays a move like c5 we have the beautiful idea knight e4 i mean both the knight and the bishop clamping down on this c3 knight if knight takes e4 we're simply going to play f takes e4 attacking the queen and attacking the rook so i think that the best option here is c takes b6 in which case we're now going to play knight takes c3 talk about an active knight supported by this bishop and following a move like rook a e1, we can play a takes b6, now up upon this rook attacking the a2 pawn, and we have ourselves a one game. So going back to this original position, we just covered the move g6. What about the move e6? This has also become a very interesting option for black, in which case we're now going to play bishop e7 followed by castling kingside. And now after castling kingside, we're actually going to continue with d6. Six. Here white will usually play a move like knight c3 and I actually prefer the move knight e4 centralizing our knight right in the center of the board but let's first go over the main line with the move queen e8. This is the most popular option and this has been played for decades. Basically how it continues is by white playing a move like b3 in which we're going to play a5 advancing on the queen side of the board. Following bishop b2 we play a move like knight a6 really just trying to slow down white's attacking chances on the queen side of the board here and following a move like rookie one we now play queen h5 activating the queen in grand pre-attack type fashion many players like this opening choice as this queen is active attacking the knight and the pawn there's potential ideas of e5 breaks at four this bishop can get involved h6 and g5 however i personally don't like this main line because i think that it doesn't take much to really extinguish all of black's attacking chances simply by playing the move e4 here after taking on e4 white will continue by taking with the knight and now honestly black's best move is to take this knight off the board in which case white will simply take back with the rook let's say we continue with the move here like bishop f6 i mean white can just continue with queen e2 followed by, say, rook e1. I mean, we have a triple battery ram on the e5 with two rooks and a queen, all attacking e6. And if you look at this position, black doesn't have a ton of attacking chances. I mean, all we have is a queen, and this queen does look good, but what is it really doing? And we have a knight on a6 and pawn on a5, in which white hasn't even attacked the queen side of the board. And two bishops here. I mean, this isn't losing for black. In fact, many players like a position like this, and that's totally okay. But for me personally, I think that this is just too passive and that the coordination of our pieces is not very good. I don't usually go with this queen e8 queen h5 line let's now go over the more rare move that i really enjoy which is the move knight e4 centralizing our knight right in the center of the board 
The most popular option, and honestly the best, is queen c2, but let's go over the obvious question. I mean, why doesn't white just take the knight on e4? Well, now we're going to take with our f-pawn, attacking the knight on f3, and following a move like knight d2, and both the bishop on g2, and knight on d2, attack this e4 pawn, but now we simply continue with d5, advancing our pawns right in the center of the board. This d5 pawn defends this e4 pawn, and white will usually play a move like f3, really trying to undermine it, but in the Dutch defense, we cannot play passively. If we play passively, we're going to lose the game. We can't play a move like taking on f3, but instead have to play a move like knight c6, fighting for the center of the board, attacking the d4 pawn, and following a move like f takes e4, we're completely fine here as we take with check with our rook, attacking the king, and now after a move like knight takes f1, take on not e4, but c4 with the idea of playing bishop d7, followed by rook b8 and b5. Now this position is very messy. In fact, our pawn structure is terrible. White's pawn structure is terrible, but honestly, I think that black is completely fine. For example, if white plays a move like rook d1, we're now gonna play knight b4. We don't want to allow this d5 move in the game. And following a move like queen e4, we're gonna put our knight on d5 and simply continue this game with good chess strategy. There's a ton of options here for black. I think that the next move though could include bishop g5, which I personally really like trying to get rid of this strong placed bishop on e3. So that covers the move, knight takes e4, in which we're gonna take back the knight, play d5 and knight c6, putting immediate pressure on d4, and I like black's game there. What about the move queen c2? This is much more quiet and much more safe. Against queen c2, we're gonna continue by taking the knight on c3, and now after queen takes c3, simply continue with a5. One thing I like about playing knight e4 and knight takes c3 is that we're a lot less cramped. With our knight on f6, and by playing queen e8 and queen h5, honestly, our camp is pretty cramped. There's not a ton of activity for our pieces, but by playing knight e4, and knight takes c3, things open up a little bit, and we have a little bit more breathing room. Following a move like b3, looking to fianchetto the bishop on c1, we can now play knight c6, followed by bishop f6, where the knight used to be, and against rook a d1, really putting this rook right in the center of the board, we can play queen e8, not with the idea of playing queen h5, but with the idea of playing e5, advancing right in the center of the board. And now if white takes the pawn on e5, we take back. We have two very strong pawns on f5 and e5 right in the center of the board. I mean, attacking this fourth rank, and they're defended by our bishop on c8. Our bishop, knight, and queen all defend the pawn on e5. We have a four ideas in the air. I love black's game here. In fact, if someone walked up to me and said, hey, which position would you rather have in a tournament game, white or black, I would pick black every time. If you'd like to learn the theory behind the birds opening or reverse Dutch-like system but with the white pieces, click the video to the left. If you'd like to explore more chess openings in general, click the playlist to the right. Leave a comment to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.